What is up, gentlemen and ladies? It is the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One. <laughs> and we're back at it again, answering your questions in another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. All right, so this is a series where we answer the questions left by our subscribers, by our viewers about Warhammer 40k, or pretty much anything in the world that you guys want us to answer. Uh, in order for you guys to get your question answered, just comment down below, put question in front of your question because we read those first. We can filter through that a lot easier, kind of like in a, in a video like today. Mm -hmm. um, so this question comes from, I believe it is Aaron Herbert. How do Chaos Cultists get c converts? Do they go door to door asking if they want to hear about our God blankety blank? Or in the case of corn, stacking skulls in a pile labeled converts? <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Um, so we can break it down in, by by chaos gods. So like with corn, he would get com converts or he would get uh, inductees into the Cornet cult by going into a, a world where there's battle. There's a battle and like there's a man dying or whatever. His 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 side has lost and then corn shows up and says, do you want revenge? Turn to chaos, collect more skulls for me, and I will give you the power to get revenge on the people that have destroyed your people. And then, bam, all of a sudden, you have a coordinate follower. That's right. Zinch? Zinch is always like, oh, look, look at all the people that backstabbed you. Your emperor has left you. He does not protect. He is no god of yours. Look at all these schemes that got you where you are now. You're nothing, you're pathetic. But if you join Zeech, you will have the knowledge. the knowledge of a thousand sorcerers and you could do away with all your enemies. And it's like, oh, I'm, I'm worthless now, but he's giving me the option to rise up against my enemies. Yep. Boom. Papa Nurgle, he's really cool because uh, kind of like the Sound Alchemist, he was sick a little bit ago. Um, a lot of bit ago. <laughs> and then Nurgle will come up and he'd be like, uh, so you're, you're dying. Um, I'm you sure. Wanna... Yeah, it's like, I'm sure you're in a lot of pain right now. Oh, look at all that pus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, devote to me and I will keep you alive. You just have to fight. You have to fight the, the, the disease. The disease. And bam, you have a, a Nurgle follower. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Slanesh, you're at a strip club. You got booty shaking, you got tits jiggling. And you run out of singles, what do you do? <laughs> Turn to Slanesh. There you go. Endless singles, endless booties, endless tits. Mm -hmm. But then you grow um, a vagina and a penis. Best of both worlds, hey? It's a win-win right there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are the main ways. And then after that, like the cults themselves would actually entice people by lying to them yeah uh, with the same concept we can help you become better at this we can help you defeat your foe we can we can cure you of your illness mm -hmm. so beware the door-to-door -door, um jehovah witnesses especially if they give you pamphlets with the star of chaos on it yes um next question callum dixon if the emperor becomes a god if he already isn't could there be a birth like Slanesh creating an Eye of Terror? Or was that only unique to the Eldar and Slanesh? I think it's only unique to the Eldar and Slanesh. The reason I say that is because Inead. Inead was born um, through a great fall, so the fall of Baal-Tan, the crap world. Um, but it didn't open up a gate to the warp or anything like that. Um, right? Right. Um, if the Emperor does become a god or if he does ascend, there, uh, there's always going to be like ripples in the warp or something along the lines which kind of changes the fabric of the warp a little bit but since the emperor isn't chaos i'm not sure exactly what that would mean um maybe endless astronomicon i don't know yep if for if Brut osnola says could ined absorb the nightbringer or vice versa, and become an incarnate of death, more powerful than either of them. I, it's possible, I guess. Um, we've talked about this before, and Catan are weak against warp powers, and since the Eldar you know, are adept at warp technology and whatnot, it is possible that Inead or Ned can take on Nightbringer. Dave, oh go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm still, still. David, David Alejandro, 
Who would the president of Mexico, Peño Neta, be? Uh, so what character in Warhammer 40k would president of Mexico, Peña, Peña Nieto, be? Uh, he would be some pussy ass dude, I don't know. <laughs> um, some, some sellout. Who's a sellout in Warhammer 40k? Van Dyer Goge. No, Van Dyer Goge had more power than, than Nieto. I don't know, some sellout. Next question. <laughs> Graydon Steph. Have or can the Primarchs conceive? Can they have children? No, they are they're sterile, aren't they? Or... They don't have penises. Oh, it's not in the lore, so they don't have penises. <laughs> and along that same line, this one's by the Watcher. Who has the biggest and longest Warhammer? Who has the biggest and longest Warhammer in, in Warhammer? Vulcan. He's that's not a penis. <laughs> That's his, uh, that's his, uh... That's his thing. thing. He, has a, he has a hammer, right? Mm-hmm. That can teleport. <laughs> He's basically Thor, but the black version, the scaly black version of Thor. That's what happens when you don't put lotion on, children. <laughs> uh, Lois Marer. Is it possible to have loyalist space marines that are basically just chill out? Mm, what do you mean? <laughs> like, like, marines oh. that don't fight? Uh, yeah, or even unzealous. Oh. I ask this because I read the Inquisitor Inquisition War years back, and they had an Imperial Fist, I believe, and I recall him not being so overboard with uh, those uh, with his own marineness. So, is there anything along those lines of at least possibility of Marines that would that wouldn't kill babies? <laughs> um, marines don't kill babies, but uh, what kind of oh Imperial Fist? There's certain chapters that are more helpful to human beings than other chapters. For instance, uh, Space Wolves, they're, they're pretty good to their people of Fenris, but everybody else, they're still pretty ferocious. Right. Uh, think of the Salamanders. They're basically for the people. So, mm -hmm. so they're really nice. Um, so it all depends on your gene seed and what uh, chapter you fall under. Right. Um, also, who's, who's leading you? Because you could have a dick, you know, chapter master. Yep. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is that mm, certain Space Marine chapters don't believe the God Emperor to be divine. So when you said unzealous, yeah, there are some people that understand that the God Emperor was a G, but he wasn't the Capital divine G. G. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's by Sam Fuller. Do you guys ever think you will do painting tutorials on YouTube? Yes. At some point, we're going to do painting tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> Voice of the Emperor, is that it? Yeah, that was it. If you could, would you send either the Doom Marines from Doom 2016 into the warp, or both the Tyranids and the Orcs into the warp? And what would you think would happen with either option? So the Doom Marines from Doom 2016, I haven't played Doom 2016. I saw like a 20 minute gameplay of it, and basically, no matter what gets thrown at him, he just like kicks their ass. He can like kill skeleton warriors with like a single punch so he's basically a badass hmm. uh tearing it into the warp would be a bad idea just because you don't know what the outcome might be uh you got to remember that the the warp can transport you pretty much anywhere so the Tyranids are over here in the eastern fringe if all of a sudden they go into the warp or you throw them into the warp and they appear and like all over the place that's not good for you mm -mm. and then orcs in the warp orcs orcs in the warp warp already happened and they love it. Mm -hmm. It's like them at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, endless battles, they're gonna grow gigantic. They get a bunch of tokens, they go, they don't find the prize that they want because they don't have enough tokens or tickets, and they just smash everybody to pieces. It's up Chucky, and Chucky keeps them at bay. Yeah, because <laughs> he's scary. Everybody's scared of Chucky. Shane A, have you guys found my underwear? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's just say, Need a wipe better, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Voice of the Emperor has another question. Could the 40k universe essentially be called the placebo effect universe? Because with all the trillions of beings in the material universe and elsewhere and their various beliefs that are able to make things work, like the orcs as a prime example, could that make sense? P.S. Sorry for the way this question ended. It's late and I'm going to Emerald City Comic Con tomorrow. Wow. Hey. That's awesome. Um, how did it go? Did you buy anything cool? Um, and then secondly, yeah, basically. But I don't think 
that it's that that instant um by what i mean by that is like even though they say that if humans believe strong enough a certain entity would emerge it's not that quick it's not that easy same thing with the orcs even though they say that um if they believe the gun works the gun works gun jams occur all the time um that's why orcs suck, suck at shooting <laughs> well accuracy really but yeah um so. it's like belief can only go so far right right next question bruno lani your loan what if malkador the sigilite first of all it's malkador the hero what if Malkador wasn't able, or was able, to sustain the psychic barrier to the warp? Um, that's pretty interesting. So what if Malkador was sitting on the throne and now, and the Emperor was basically free to do what he needs to do? He would be removed because the Emperor needed... Because um, that was his way of uh, healing from the battle with Horus. Yeah. But, do you think that after he healed, would he put Malkador back on there and then he would lead? I mean, I don't think he would heal, but maybe. I mean, well, because so Macador was removed and he died. Right, because it, it literally drained him of his life. So if he was removed, would he lead Malkador? Yes. No, uh, like, I, I thought he meant, like, if yeah. Malkador was able to sustain the Golden Throne, like, let's say it didn't really kill him, but he was able to sit on it and keep it going and whatnot, mm -hmm. and the Emperor was able to do what he, you know, what would what would happen? If he would have somehow killed Horus without himself being hurt, that would have been awesome. So the Great Crusade would continue, there'd be more planets, everything would be better off for the Imperium. Mm -hmm. But that can't happen because it's Warhammer 40k and it's a constant war thingy. Um, grained in stuff. Have or can the Primarchs have children? No. That maybe the Lost Ones did oh. and that's why they were killed. Uh, Sander Stalin, are you guys gonna make more creepy pastas? We sure is. Um, probably at the end of this week or at the end of next week for the patrons on Patreon. Hey. <laughs> uh, and then you guys get it a month from that. Uh, any more questions? How many hours a day do you pray to the Emperor? Asks Fars. Three. Uh, Two and a half, because I need that half hour of uh, lashing myself for the emperor. So I guess that's also prayer. You lash yourself for the emperor? Mm -hmm. I got like three different kinds of whips. It's like one has jam on it, the other one has jelly, and the last one has bread. So when I'm done, I just like get myself a little peanut butter sandwich. There you go. Sebastian Swar Swarlays. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. There are, s there are sometimes mentioned to be something like Dark Eldar craft worlds in the webway, or general generally other Dark Eldar colonies or worlds. Yes, like Kamara. Mm -hmm. I think this makes sense, as in Kamara itself, nothing can really grow as there is no sunlight. So how would life look like on these planets, colonies, or both slaves and Dark Eldar? So we're answering all those questions <laughs> in the Kamara videos. Yeah. You're, so. gonna, you're gonna get one I think tomorrow and the day after that. So stay tight and if not check out our Kamara video and you'll learn more. Do you have any more questions? We got time for one more and it is John Redcorn. He asks, if the Emperor did wake up and wanted to destroy the Space Marines for some reason, how screwed would he be if all the Space Marine chapters and Primarchs united against him? Not that screwed. Because, well, you said all um, Space Marines were united, right? Mm -hmm. The Emperor has the Gene Siege stock. The Inquisition has it, right? I so, believe so, yeah. Yeah, it's the Inquisition or the Ecclesiarchy. But they have it, he would be able to create more Space Marines with the Gene Seeds that he has. So it would be Space Marine against Space Marines. Space Marines would not have any more Gene C. They would be screwed. Yeah. Um, and anyway, I feel like if they did fight against one another, he would have the help of the Custodes, and I feel like the Grey Knights would ally with the Emperor instead of with the Space Marines. Mm -hmm. So he's already got these two awesome forces. Yeah. So.
So sorry, Space Marines, you guys would be toast. Um, a small version of this happened in the Bad App Wars. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a lower video on the Bad App Wars, but essentially the traitors, quote unquote, um, were destroyed. Yeah. And uh, last one, he does have a part two. Who has a bigger forehead out of Logar, Rihanna, Rob Schneider, and Peyton Manning? Well, I believe Lorgar is bald. So his forehead goes all the way back. Yes, he wins. <laughs> um, Num number two, I'd say Rihanna. Because uh, she's, she's under the... Who gets by for I have a forehead. No, a five, five head? I could squeeze... I could squeeze my, uh, my thumb in there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's what she said. Mm -hmm. um, that's all the time we got. <laughs> thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing. Mm -hmm. As always, don't forget to check out our other social media sites. We post stuff on Instagram. We usually post leaks on Instagram. We're not going to post them on here because we don't want to do that. Um, so subscribe to or follow us on Instagram. Facebook is another place where we post leaks, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can talk to us more directly on Facebook, actually. That's right. So, so just flood the sound alchemist with a bunch of questions. Yeah, it's not like I already get like 30 comments a day. So if I can do 100, uh... there you go. Yeah. So that's all the time we got for you guys. Thank you for asking questions, and you'll see us in the next episode of For the Greater Wall. As always, he is Gershwin, Sound Alchemist, and we are out of here.